What's happening everybody? Alright, we're going to be talking in this video about how you use probability tree diagrams in order to find probabilities involving multiple events or repeated events. We've looked at how you use uh, Venn diagrams and sample space diagrams, other things to find probabilities, but this will focus, as the goal says, on probabilities involving multiple events, meaning maybe you toss a coin and then you roll a die, of course we're going to use sample space diagrams for that, or repeated events where you maybe draw a card from a deck and then draw another card from the deck either with or without replacement. Alright, we'll actually only handle with replacement in this video. Anyway, tree diagrams, which are one of my favorite ways of solving probability problems. Alright, let's look at a few examples here. This one says that when Lorenzo plays football, the probability he scores in the first half is one-third and in the second half is one-fourth. We're going to find a couple probabilities that in a single match he would do specific things. Now, first of all, where's the probability, probability like this taken from? Probably based on his experience. He scores about one out of every three games in the first half, one out of every four games in the second half. That's nothing to do with how I'll answer this question, just some information for you there. But anyway, let's find the probability that he scores first a goal, period, and then secondly that he scores only in the second half of a game. All right, well, the trick to any probability question is being able to understand what the sample space looks like. What are all the possible outcomes? And with tree diagrams in particular, you can get really creative with the way that you um, display those outcomes sometimes. Now, we're not going to be so creative here, but in other ones, I will get creative. We have two events happening. We've got the first half of the game, and then we've got the second half of the game. All right, and so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show what are all the possible outcomes that can happen in the first half of the game. And we can say that either he scores a goal or he doesn't score a goal. I'll use G, the complement of G to represent does not score a goal in the first half. Now, we also would like on our diagram to label the, po the probability of each of the events that we're trying to display. And, of course, it says in the problem that in the first half, there's a 1 in 3 chance that he does score. So we'll label that on this branch, which would imply then that not scoring in the first half would happen two-thirds of the time. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the possible outcomes from the second half of the game. Now, we're going to end up with four branches here. It's still going to be he either scored or didn't score in the, first, in the second half, but we're trying to show, you know, based on what he did in the first half, what did he also do in the second half? So, it's possible he scored a goal in the first half. And then he scored a goal in the second half, or maybe he scored a goal in the first half and didn't score a goal in the second half. Right? And similarly, we can say that if he didn't score in the first half, he still could have either scored or not scored in the second half of the game. So, there's our probability tree diagram we do need to label some probabilities regardless of what he did in the first half we're told that there's a one in four chance that he scores in the second half and so there would be a three in four chance that he does not score in the second half and we need to label that on each of these branches right here okay so trick number one of course is being able to draw the diagram so that it helps you see the sample space. And the sample space would be that he scores both times. That would be this branch right here. That he scores the first time, not the second time. Doesn't score in the first half and does score in the second half. Or does not score in either half. you got to be able to follow the entire length of a branch to get over here to see what the sample space is. The next thing is being able to find out what the probability of each of those outcomes in the sample space is going to be. And that turns out to be very simple to do. All right. If I wanted to find the probability that he scores goals in both halves, for instance, well, what I would need to do is multiply all the probabilities along the path that gets me to goals, goals, goal and goal. So I would multiply one third times one fourth. There is a one in 12 chance that he scores in each half. Okay, and then the probability the scores in the first half, but not in the second half, in other words, that he follows this branch, would be one-third times three-fourths, 
and that would be 3 twelfths. Yes, I could reduce that, simplify, excuse me, better term, but I like to not do that in this case, not until the final answer. I'll try to explain why if it's relevant later on. The probability that this does not score a goal the first half and does score the second half would be two-thirds times one-fourth, or two-twelfths. And then the probability that scores only in, uh, sorry, that he does not score at all would be two-thirds times three-fourths, which is six-twelfths. Now here's the reason I didn't want to simplify those ratios. I want to make sure that my outcomes, the sum of the probabilities of each outcome equals one. 1 12th plus 3 twelfths is 4 twelfths, plus 2 twelfths is 6 twelfths, plus another 6 twelfths is 12 twelfths. I've covered 100% of the possibilities there, haven't I? Alright, so let's find the probability that he scores a goal. Now what we need to do is we need to see what are all the outcomes in which he scored a goal. Well, there are three such outcomes, right? It's possible that he scored a goal in the first half, but did not score a goal in the second half, right? So there's him scoring a goal. It's possible that he did not score in the first set, first half, but he did score in the second half. So there's another outcome. And then it's also possible that he scored a goal in both halves. He, he would have definitely scored a goal if he scored in both halves, right? And the probability that he would have scored a goal then would be the sum of the probabilities of each of those outcomes. 1 twelfth plus 3 twelfths plus 2 twelfths. We're going to say that he's got a 6 twelfths or one half chance of scoring a goal. All right, now what's the probability that he scores only in the second half of the game? Well, that would imply a very specific outcome, wouldn't it? That would imply that he does not score in the first half. So we're going to go along this branch here and that he does score in the second half. And we've already determined that, well, this is that outcome. Whoops, I meant to use a highlighter there. This is that outcome, right? So, he's got a 2 and 12 chance of scoring only in the second half of the game, and 2 and 12 is, of course, the same as 1 and 6. All right, so there's a tree diagram. Now, I want to work with cards in a standard deck, because these problems, there's so many various ways of using tree diagrams to solve them, and I'd like you to see kind of how that works out. In this example, we're going to see a, say that a card is drawn at random from a standard deck, so 52 cards all that standard deck stuff. It is then replaced and a second card is drawn. Now it's important that after the first card is drawn it's put back in the deck. That's what is replaced means. It means we have the same number of cards to choose from the second time as we did the first time. We want to find the probability of doing some various things starting with drawing different colors. Well as I work my way from part A to part B and possibly part C of this example depending on time what you're going to notice is that I'm going to draw a different tree diagram each time. And the tree diagram I'm going to draw is going to be based on the type of outcome that I'm looking for. Because when you're looking at a standard deck and drawing a card from it, you can have outcomes that involve colors, can't you? You can have outcomes that involve the rank of a card. Did you draw a tray? Did you draw a seven or a jack? And you can also have outcomes involving suits, spades, hearts, clubs, diamonds. So the tree diagrams vary depending on outcomes that you're looking for. I want to know the probability that we draw different colors here. And so, well, there's only two different colors in a standard deck, aren't there? So the first card, we would either draw red or we would draw black. Okay, you could also, well, yeah, that's good enough for us. Now, I'm not going to label the probabilities of drawing red or black here because aren't they equally likely? And if ever you draw a tree diagram and you don't label the probability for each branch, that means the outcomes are equally likely. So it's implied here that there's a one, one out of two chance for a red, one out of two chance for a black. And then we're going to replace that card. And, well, maybe you drew a red the first time, then you drew a red the second time, or you drew a black the second time, right? Or you drew a black the first time, then you drew a red the second time, or a black the second time. You see all the outcomes. And again... The outcomes here were equally likely, so I don't need to chant to uh, label the probabilities on the branch. Now, if the card had not been replaced, okay, it was replaced here, but if the card had not been replaced, we would have only added 51 cards in the second draw, and so we would not have had equally likely outcomes. All right, we'll get to that in the next video, though. So, 
the outcomes here are either that you get two reds or a red then black, black then red, or black then black, right? And there's a one in four chance of getting any of those things because you're doing one half times one half no matter which branch that you choose in this particular problem. And so then if you're trying to find the probability of drawing different colors, well, there's two outcomes where that happened. You're either looking for the outcome where you drew a red the first time and a black the second time, or where you drew black the first time and then red the second time, right? And then we're going to add those probabilities together, and we'll find that the probability of getting cards of different colors is one half, which you might have guessed, honestly. All right, same experiment, but a different type of outcome that we're looking for here. All right, we're still drawing a card, replacing, drawing another card. This time I want you to find the probability of drawing first a spade and then a face card. All right. Now, in the last example, we were just looking at colors. Now we're looking at the, the suit of the card and the rank of the card. This gets a little more complicated, or seemingly so anyway. All right, we still want to draw the outcomes for the first card and the second card. Pay careful attention to the logic that I use as I make my tree diagram here. On the first card, I care about the suit. But I don't have to consider all four suits separately. And, and what I mean by that is I don't need to draw a tree diagram with four branches, one for spades, one for clubs, one for hearts, and one for diamonds. And the reason I don't have to do that is because I only care whether it's a spade or whether it's not a spade. And so I can just use two branches here for this first, uh, for the first card. And I can say either I got a spade or I did not get a spade. And there's a 1 in 4 chance of drawing a spade. There's a 3 in 4 chance of getting something else, right? Now for the second card, my outcome has nothing to do with spade or not spade or suits, period. It has to do with whether I get a face card or I don't get a face card. All right? And so I can say that I got a spade and then I got a face card. Or I got a spade and then did not get a face card. And I can draw the same two branches off of the didn't get a spade the first time branch. Okay, I didn't draw a spade, then I got a face card. I didn't draw a spade, and then I got a did not get a face card. Amazing how simple these things are when you think about the possible outcomes that you're getting. But if you don't think it through, this could have been a very complicated looking tree diagram. All right, well, now face cards, hopefully you know this, that only the jacks, queens, and kings are face cards. Um, and you've got 12 of those in the deck out of 52 cards. Really, basically, it works out where three out of every 13 ranks is a face. And so you can say you got a three in 13 chance of getting a face card, a 10 in 13 chance of not getting a face card. And that will be true regardless of whether we got a spade or not a spade the first time. Because we're replacing again, right? Okay, so what's the probability of each outcome? Well, you already know how to find each the probabilities of each individual outcome in the sample space. You just multiply the probabilities on the branch. So, I did, for instance, three-fourths times 10, 13, so you get 30 out of 52. And I'll label them all just so we can see that the probabilities add up to the right thing. Three plus 10 is 13, plus nine is 22, plus 30 is 52. We covered all 52 out of 52 possible outcomes. All right, now that is a little bit reduced, but well, never mind. You get what I'm doing right there. All right, so the probability of getting a spade and then a face card happens to just be the first branch of our, the first set of branches in our tree diagram, right? Right there and right there. And there's a 3 in 52 chance or 1 in 14 chance Oh, not 1 in 14, excuse me. 52 is not divisible by 3, is it? No, it's not. So just a 3 out of 52 chance 
Oh, we're getting a spade and then a face card. All right, I'll tell you what, for time's sake, let's just go ahead and stop the lesson right here, and then you can ask me more questions in class. We'll get more, more problems in class. Thanks for your attention, guys. I hope you've seen how easy it is to use a tree diagram. It takes a lot of practice to get used to determining the outcomes that you care about, you know, such as the spade and face card deal, but you will get that practice through the exercises. Thanks again. See ya.